My husband and I had found out in January of this year that we were pregnant with our first child. And um, here we are almost a year later without our child. I hadn't felt my baby son move in about 36 hours. To spare a very long story, a story that involves many nurses and doctors and ultrasounds and confusion, um, I was told that my son no longer had a heartbeat and uh, that he had passed away. Within several hours, they had started inducing me into labor to give birth to my son. I think that what stands out for me most when working with Corey and Matt is um, how scared they were because of course nobody expects to come to the hospital to deliver their baby and not come home with it. Amy had come to see me after the induction had begun and um, you know, I, I still was, was feeling very detached uh, from, from the entire event. And so in comes this woman who has all of these options for, for what we can do once our son was born. We could hold him, we could take pictures with him, we could wash him, we could brush his hair if he had hair, we could take him with us to um, to the recovery room, to their bereavement suite in something called a cuddle cot. Prior to having the cuddle cot available to us, um, typically the way that our system would work is that the baby would go and stay with a parent as long as it were possible. Um, it's a little bit graphic, but due to the nature of death, um, the baby would start to break down. And in that process, when the baby would begin to deteriorate, we would need to then take the baby to the morgue um, so that the baby could be chilled. And um, now we don't have to do that. With the advent of the cuddle cat, we're able to further support keeping the, the family together, allowing a lot of family, whoever, to visit. And the baby can stay right here in the room with the parents, with the family in a cradle that keeps the baby cool. The parents are educated as to why the baby needs to be cooled. And um, the feedback, the response is very overwhelmingly positive. Kind of a phrase that we use in bereavement is the gift of time. Um, and this allows family the most amount of time that they could possibly have with their babies. Wes at that point was, was clothed in, in these beautiful donated clothes and, and in, in a, a hand knit receiving blanket and he was in the cuddle cot which is, um, is actually inside of a Moses basket so he just looked like this little angel. Just the physical act of being close to him was all that mattered. I couldn't ever imagine anyone taking him away from me at that point. And I'm so glad that nobody tried to because I needed him to be there with me. It's the only memory I'll ever have of him. There's, there's a detachment in them not being together. Um, even if the baby's leaving in the middle of the night while the parents are sleeping, sometimes they still just want the baby in the room. Um, they don't want that separation at all. Because the reality is that as soon as you leave the hospital, you never get to see your baby again. The majority of U.S. hospitals, as it sits right now, do not have the policies in place and do not have this piece of medical equipment, this cuddle cot. We were the first hospital in the U.S. to implement the cuddle cot, um, and I think that many more hospitals are going to jump on board quickly as soon as people find out that it is available. Our staff was thrilled for a multitude of reasons. It was good for them, kind of lessened their workload in terms of having to transport the baby back and forth to the morgue. 
It's been a very smooth transition for us. I would say to anybody considering a cuddle cot that if you're not familiar with or you haven't experienced what your staff does, what it means to a family and what it means to your staff caring for people experiencing infant loss, that you meet with them, talk with them, um, hear firsthand what it means to go through this experience with a family and what it can mean to have the whole situation optimized by being able to keep that baby with the family in the, in, a, in the best condition that it can be under the best circumstances that you can have and make this horrific experience for a family the very best that it could be. That, that time, the time that, I've, that I had with him, the time that Matt had with him, the time that our parents had with him as he was in that cot and because we had that cot, that is the only memory that I will have, that they will have, for the rest of their lives. The only memory of this human being, this soul, this beautiful child, is the only memory we're ever going to have. And I can't imagine not being able to have that memory. Regardless of whether or not your child is here, you're still its mother and it's always your child. It doesn't go away just because they're not, they're not physically here.